Thank you to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. Today I present to you a review of every pirate's favourite camera. The R Z67. And if you're still watching, congratulations. So I picked up this camera with the intention of taking more portraits. It's this giant lump of a camera which was designed with the idea that it would sit on top of a tripod in a studio as a workhorse. This means that it's not the most ergonomic thing to work with handheld, and it's definitely more of a workout than some other cameras. It weighs a ton, and it's also just really hard to handle. There's no grips or just natural kind of placements for your hands. But by no means do I think this is a deal breaker. I'd be surprised if this puts anybody off, especially when the results are considered. So why did I pick up this camera with portraits in mind? Firstly, it's an SLR, which means that when you're looking through the camera, what you see is what you get. For a long time, I've been shooting portraits with rangefinders. And although you do know what your composition is gonna be, you don't know exactly how that will look through the lens. And this can sometimes make a huge difference. Another huge benefit over rangefinders is the focusing. Rangefinders normally have a minimum focus and medium format of about a meter, whereas the RZ has a bellows focusing system. This means you can focus pretty much as close as you could ever want to. I mean, you would have to get uncomfortably close to your subject if you wanted to get to the minimum focusing distance. This kind of eliminates the need of a macro lens in some situations, it kind of makes the normal kit lens everything you could ever need. The RZ also uses leaf shutters in its lenses. This allows you to have flash sync speeds of up to 1 400th of a second, which is a pretty huge benefit when you're shooting with flash. This has been particularly handy for me recently. I've been shooting a bunch of portraits to start updating my portfolio in the last few weeks, and I've been using a strobe for all of it. When shooting outdoors, having a higher sync speed kind of allows you to overpower the sun a bit more. If you can reduce the exposure, the flash stays the same, so just the, the natural light dims. And this allows you to get a more kind of contrasting, interesting lighting effect. And if you could only sync speeds at say 1 30th, like a Pentax 6.7, this just wouldn't be possible. So the weather's been pretty rubbish in England whilst I've been filming this video. So I haven't really been able to go out and get much footage to spice up the visuals. However, thanks to Storyblocks, today's sponsor, I can pretend I'm shooting anywhere. Storyblocks is an ever-growing catalogue of stock images, video, graphics and After Effects templates. I actually can't believe how much variety of footage there is available. I'm slightly ashamed to admit that I've been having way too much fun just browsing through the vast array of clips that I now have at my fingertips. Sometimes you're just missing that one shot that would make a huge difference in a video's narrative. Just like now, where I'm missing some footage of me out and about taking photos. And this problem doesn't really exist anymore when you have access to Storyblocks. Stock footage is normally insanely expensive, and what's so great about Storyblocks is that you can get unlimited downloads of high quality, royalty free stock footage that you can use in any projects, whether it's for YouTube or for commercial use. So check out the link in the description to learn more about Storyblocks video, and go show them some love for supporting the channel. The RZ is a pretty modular camera. It's got a bunch of different backs for different film formats, it's got different prisms depending on your preference, and it's also got different focusing screens, maybe like a grid or a crosshair or just nothing at all. And all of this is great just to kind of build out the camera which you want. It's nice to have a bit of choice to just kind of build the perfect setup. Some people find it tricky using the waist level finder and would much rather use a prism, which makes the camera act as just a, a giant SLR. I mean, really giant. It's it's not like a normal SLR. One of the huge benefits of the RZ is the rotating back, which is actually where its name comes from. You simply flip a switch on the side of the camera and then the back turns around to change it from landscape to portrait. And then on top of the focusing screen, a little mask comes out so you know where your frame lines are. I don't know if you've ever tried turning a waist level finder camera sideways to try and shoot portrait like that, but it's so disorientating, it's so hard to do and this just eliminates that problem. And this to me is a huge benefit over some other cameras which don't have this option. Like the Mamiya 645, you'd have to use a prism if you want to take portrait images. So the standard kind of kit lens for the RZ is an 110mm 
f2.8, which comes in a bit more narrow than a standard 6x7 lens, which would be 80mm. And this, combined with a pretty low aperture for medium format, means that you can really milk that medium format look if you do want to go for some incredibly shallow depth of field. The lens is unbelievably sharp, Mamiya really know what they're doing when it comes to glass, and even though I don't have like the highest resolution scans, you can just tell that in the detail of the skin, there's going to be so much in that negative. At this point, I haven't been able to test out any other lenses. However, I do see myself in the future picking up a wider alternative, just because 110mm is pretty tight, and I think when you're shooting full body portraits, you just have to be a bit too far away from your subject. However, I do really like how compressed it makes the images look. So in conclusion, after, I don't know, a month and a bit of using this camera, it's really great. There's nothing wrong with this other than the ergonomics, I guess, and this is just something which I will put up with for the results. I think realistically this is one of two cameras which are great for taking portraits with if you want to shoot 6x7. It's either this or the Pentax, and to me, I would much rather use this camera. The only reason why you might use the Pentax is for that more traditional grip, which some people might find more comfortable. However, to me, the additional sync speed is worth a lot more. Also, I do enjoy using a waist level finder, and it's kind of like a hybrid between a large format camera and a medium format camera, where you're, you stand looking over it and you put it on a tripod, and it just feels slow and thoughtful, whereas when I'm shooting with a Pentax, it just feels like I could run through so many images if I wanted to. The only downside I can see myself facing with this camera is if I were to go traveling. It's not really ideal, you know, it, it is amazing for a planned shoot, but it's not really a thing you just put in your bag to go on a day out. It's a commitment, but if you are committed, you'll get the results. So yeah, thank you again to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video, be sure to check them out in the first line of the description, and stay tuned for new videos coming very soon.